Hello everyone, we are in the fifth module and in this module we, we are going to uh, solve some problems uh, using first order reliability method that we have learned in our previous modules. And in this module we are going to apply MATLAB and develop codes and solve uh, first order reliability methods. So, we have already learned first order reliability methods and we have also developed different models for solving different limit states. So, if we quickly review the first order reliability method before we start implementing the same in MATLAB, uh, we see that we have a limit state gx equal to 0. As you can see that we first convert into gz equal to 0 using a transformation that is known to us and then we uh, find out the derivatives of this function which we call limit state with respect to the random variables that describes the limit state. In this case, if you have n number of random variables, so z1, z2, z3 up to zn, so what we have to do, we have to differentiate the function limit state g with respect to zi. Now, once we do that, then our next important step is to find out the direction cosines which we denote it by alpha. And then once we find out the direction cosines and then we can solve um, for new design point or beta that we have already discussed. And there are different problems that we can encounter. And as you can see, depending upon the type of random variables, we have all these four possibilities. So, we first define the limit state and the random variables and using Rackwitz algorithm, we solve the problem. So, in this lecture, we are going to implement the same algorithm using MATLAB. So, the first problem that we are going to solve in this case is where we have all random variables which are uncorrelated and normal. Now, in this case, let us quickly go through the algorithm first and then we will start implementing that in MATLAB. We have already gone through this algorithm. Let us quickly go through them. So, we have a limit state function gx that we convert into standard normal space. Then we find out the derivatives of this function with respect to the random variables in standard normal space that is zi. Then we start the iterative procedure where we initiate beta and the design point. There are some specific uh, norms uh, that we follow. We have already discussed that. You all know it. We will see how we can uh, write the code. And then once we initialize beta and design point, then we evaluate the partial derivatives of g with respect to zi at that point. And then uh, using that, we actually find out the new design point in the Z space. And then finally, we have to get back the design point in X space that again we can convert back to X space using the statistical properties of the random variable. In this case, all are normal. So, they are defined by their respective mean and standard deviation. So, that gives us the new design point in X space. And with that, one iteration complete. So, at the end of every iteration, we check the error. And if it is allowable, well within tolerance limit, then we stop the iteration. Otherwise, we again repeat the complete iterative procedure. Now, once the algorithm is converged, then we get the most probable point of failure. That is the optimized point in the standard normal space. And that actually gives us the complete algorithm for um, first order reliability method using hassofer lind definition and rackwitz fisler algorithm. Now, we are going to solve a few problems. So, in this lecture, we are going to solve altogether five problems. So, these problems I have collected from different books and research papers so that uh, you get complete idea how to solve this uh, different problems using uh, Rackwood's Fisler algorithm. 
at the end of this lecture series uh, i will provide a set of problems altogether we have uh, 30 plus problems collected from different sources and i will always encourage you to solve all those problems because once you solve all those problems uh, then you will develop a fairly good idea how to apply this method for practical cases so our first problem in this case we have already solved it during our uh, previous lectures so today we are going to solve the same using matlab and i will show you step by step how to implement uh, this uh, solution procedure in matlab and how we can estimate beta and pf so the first problem is a limit state where we have gx equal to x1 x2 minus 1140 which is equal to 0 that's the limit state in this case we have two random variables x1 and x2 and the first possibility we are now solving today is where we have both x1 and x2 are uncorrelated normal so the properties of x1 is given in this case it is normal with mean 38 and standard deviation 3.8 and x2 which is also normal has a mean of 54 and standard deviation 5.4 this problem i have taken from haldar mohadevan's book so let us see how we can write a matlab code for this problem so similarly we have other problems here you can see one by one we'll solve so altogether five problem i have selected to show you how to solve these problems in matlab so let us start our matlab coding i also kept this uh, problem statement open so that we can refer to this uh, statement so we have a limit state gx equal to x1 x2 minus 1140 which is equal to 0 now we'll write different function files so that we can call the same uh, function files to solve first order reliability problem so let us first create a function file where we'll describe all the limit states so the first function file which will define the limit states so i define a variable limit state details which is equal to the function file name in this case i call it limit state and in this case the only input variable i give it is uh, limit state id because we are going to solve five different problems so we'll use this function file where we'll define all the limit states so using this limit state id the variable name is ls underscore id we will call different limit states one by one now so our first limit state id is one so in this case it is one so whenever we'll use limit state id one so we'll solve the first problem now let us define the limit state function which is in this case x1 x2 minus 1140 so we have two random variables x1 and x2 so we'll use symbolic calculations for that we first define symbolic variables so we have x1 and x2 so uh, because we use capital letters for x1 and x2 so let us define accordingly so x1 and x2 are the two random variables that actually describe the limit state in this case it is x1 x2 minus 1140 and we have to convert this first into z space so we need two more random variables in the z space so they are z1 and z2 so we have x 
which has it is a vector random variable which has two variables x1 and x2 similarly we have z which is also a vector random variable and we have z1 and z2 then we define gx which in this case is x1 times x2 minus 1140 then this function will give the complete details of limit states so that means limit state function in this case it is g underscore x along with the symbolic variables that we need to perform the reliability analysis to get the reliability index beta and probability of failure so we define the limit state details in this way so the x is the actual random variable in the original space then we have z and then in this ls underscore details that is limit state details we have g underscore x so whenever we call this function limit state with an id we get the complete details of the limit state which are defined here so that forms the first function so let us save it let me create a library so let me create a folder i name it form underscore tutorial so here we save the limit state function then we define a second function in this case we will define the output variables the function name is uncorrelated normal because we are solving uncorrelated normal so let us call it uc underscore normal and then we define the variables at the input so in this case we have to first define the limit state id because that's how we will call the actual limit state that we are going to solve then we have to define the properties of the random variable in this case all are normal so we have mean and sigma and then we define beta initial And also we define tolerance, which we call TOL. And then the algorithm actually continues iteratively, but we have to stop the algorithm if uh, it continues for long. So we just uh, provide a variable, we call it number of iterations. So NIT will set some upper bound of number of iterations so that we can check whether it runs forever or it gives a converged result within this limit okay so recall in this algorithm we solve for beta so we define a variable beta which is a symbolic variable because we have to solve it using Rackwitz algorithm so we define beta which is a real variable so we define that first then we call the limit states so in this case the function is limit 
state and you see we use a function gx underscore id so that's the limit state id so we using that at the input we call the limit state function the complete details of the limit state in this case so we have gx details then once we get the limit state details we first extract the variables there if you recall we had three variables you see here x z and g underscore x so we extract them all for that we have the gx details already called and so we extract x first and similarly we extract z obviously these two variables are symbolic along with the limit state function so now we have all the variables that defines the limit state then we are about to start the iterative procedure so for that what we do we define first a variable which is nrv called number of random variable so how many random variables we have that we can easily find out from x as many entries of x we have that many random variables we have then if you recall the transformation to convert gx into gz we have to use mean and standard deviation so we define a a variable where we take the entries of standard deviation and then we have another variable b which is equal to the mean in this case why it is so let me go back to the slides and uh, if we have the yes the transformation from z to x is here you can see so x and z both of them are vector random variable that's why uh, we have to define all the entries of mu and sigma that's what we have done so we call it a and b in this case and then we have x to z so we define a variable xz which is equal to a star z plus b if you recall mean plus sigma times z so that is the transformation so if i just put a note here this actually converts from original space to standard normal space so this is the transformation now what we do we have already this gx function that is the limit state in this case it is x1 x2 minus 1140 so what we do we put the expression of x1 and x2 which has mean standard deviation and z1 z2 so which is actually given by this transformation so what we do how to substitute these variables it's very simple so we have now gz which is equal to substitute so the command is subs subs then we have gx comma x comma xz so what does it mean we have a function gx symbolically defined so in this function wherever we have this variable x that we replace with this new variable xz so we'll get basically gz in the standard normal space now what we do 
we write a for loop because we have to differentiate this gz with respect to z that we can perform in a single command but for demonstration let me write a for loop so we have a for loop here running for all the random variables that we have already extracted and then we have derivative of g so we call it dg and that we get by differentiating the function gz with respect to zi so in this case capital z that is the symbolic variable so we have a number of entries in this case number of random variables that we have extracted so this ii will range from one to number of random variables so we'll differentiate gz with respect to z and that's how we'll get the gradient fine so let us then continue next what we have to do we have to find out if you recall we define beta initial that we have already here defined as an input in this case and then after that we initialize alpha so we have alpha initial which if you recall as many random variables we have from that information we actually put equal weightage in all uh, direction cosines and we find out what will be the value of alpha initial so the variable in this case ai initial sorry al initial and that we estimate from the number of random variables So, in this case, first we estimate the magnitude of alpha and then we create a vector of ones and that we multiply with that magnitude to get the initial value of direction cosines. So, as many random variables we have, that many alpha initial we define. So, now beta is initialized direction cosines are also initialized then we are now ready to initiate the iterative procedure so for that i define a for loop again where it will start the iteration and it will run for the maximum number of iterations that we allow so let us print the number of iterations in this case then if you recall the Rackwitz algorithm how we solve on pen and paper so first we estimate z initial right how do we get that alpha initial and then that we multiply with beta initial that's how we estimate our z initial so once we get the z initial values then we can find out x initial which is again from the same transformation we have in line number 12 so we can uh, use that same uh, expression so we have a star z initial plus b so that gives me initial values of x then we have symbolically find out the gradients so at this line line number 17 we have gradients symbolically now what we have to do we have to estimate 
the values of those gradients at this um, initial values of z i n. So for that, again, we first initialize the values. In this case, differentiate g with respect to z. So we define a variable dg underscore z. So that is the variable which we first initialize as many random variables we have that many gradient we have to estimate. So again we define a for loop in this case for ii will run from 1 to number of random variables. So how do we estimate uh, the values of gradient? So for that the function uh, defined as d g underscore z so that we evaluate by substituting the values of z initial in the expression of dg. So dg that is the differential of gz with respect to z. So the places where we have z replace that with z initial. So this substitution will give me the values of gradient at the initial design point. Now once we do that, our next task is to estimate new direction cosines. So we call it alpha nu. So the variable is al underscore nu. So in this case, we estimate this vector So if you recall the expression, I will show you in a minute. Let me just uh, complete this expression and then I will show you the mathematical form and then I will explain. So what we have, if I go back to the notes that we use, you see here in this expression. So we have already estimated the first differential of g with respect to zi and then If you see this expression of alpha i star, which is minus of first differential of g with respect to z i divided by the norm of capital G. So that's what is calculated here. So you have minus of, this is the expression that we have evaluated in the previous step in line number 30. And we divide it because we have to divide each entry of this vector. So we use this expression and we divide it by the norm of this vector. So that's how we can estimate the new values of direction cosines. Then once we do that, we define a new variable that is z nu. But in this case, if you recall, how, how do we do? We use the symbolic expression of beta and we form a polynomial expression that we solve and get the roots for beta. So that's what we do here. So alpha nu star beta. Remember this beta is symbolic. We have already defined at the beginning here. Okay, so I think I used small b. So it will be 
small b here because that's how we define the variable at the beginning. So now we have to develop the polynomial equation. So what we do, we define the new function which is g z new and that's what we get by again substituting g z wherever we have z using z new. Just note this z new has symbolic beta. So this limit state function in the standard normal space wherever we have this z variable that we replace with this z nu which is alpha nu times beta. So, we will get g z nu which is now a function of beta and that we are going to solve. So, in the next line or in the next step we are going to solve for roots. So, we define v roots. And then we solve this polynomial expression. So, the expression is gz nu. So, we solve this expression to get the roots of this expression. And then beta This is the new value of beta, which is the minimum root. So, we first estimate the roots of this function and then because beta is a distance from the origin in the standard normal space, so we find out the minimum distance. Then we estimate error. So, we estimate the absolute error. So, in this case, we have beta nu and beta initial. So, once the error is estimated, then we de redefine the variables. So, we replace beta initial with beta nu and alpha initial with alpha nu. Then, if we check the error, whether it is less than the tolerable limit, if that condition is satisfied, we stop the iteration. So, that completes the function for UC normal. Still not done. So, what we have to do? Now, we have to estimate the probability of failure. So, we now define all the outputs. So, we have the design point in the standard normal space. So, for that we estimate the design point. So, we have already evaluated alpha nu that if we multiply with beta nu, we basically get the design point in the standard normal space and then we have to get the design point in the original space and for that again we use the same transformation to estimate this and the final value of beta is basically the beta nu and then we have to estimate probability of failure 
which in this case is norm CDF that we have to estimate for beta nu. Recall PF is equal to what? Phi of minus beta, capital Phi of minus beta. So that's what we estimate in line number 52. So that completes the algorithm. So what are the output? So in this case, we have the design point in the original space, then beta, that is the final value of beta, and then PF. So these are the three parameters that we get at the end of this algorithm. And then we also save this function file. Then we define a main file where we'll actually define the properties of the random variable and then we'll call it. So let us define the main file. So our beta initial, we normally set it to three. Then we have tolerance. In this case, we have 0 0.001. And then number of iterations, we set it, say 20. If the algorithm doesn't converge, then we have to see whether it faces any trouble or not. Then we have a limit state defined by an ID. So PF ID which in this case, let us define it one. That's what we set in the limit state function. So it is the limit state ID is one. And then we define the properties of random variables. So in this case, it is the mean values are 38 and 54. So that defines mean and then we have sigma standard deviation which is equal to in this case 3.8 and 5.4. So the properties of the random variables are defined. Then now we have to call the function file so in this case, what we'll get back, this is the design point in the original space, beta final, and then pf. The function file name is uc normal. Sorry, there is an underscore here. So uc normal. And the variables we have here, so PF ID, that is the problem number. Then we have mean, we have standard deviation, then we have beta initial. then tolerance and finally we provide the number of iterations. So that's the main file. So we can run this main file. And solve the problem. So let us first save it. So I name it test uc normal. So let us save it. And then everything is defined. So the limit state in this case, x1, x2, minus 1140. And then uh, we solve it using Rackwitz algorithm. Let us see what is the result. 
So if you run, you see, we get the solution. So in this case, there are two iterations, iteration 1 and 2, and the, at the end of iteration 2, we have the design point xt, which is, in this case, 28.3235 and 40.2492. And the final value of the reliability index we get is 3.6012 and the respective probability of failure is 1.5837 e 10 to the power minus 4. So, that gives you the complete idea of how to solve this first order reliability problem using Rackwitz algorithm. Now, so that's the first problem where the limit state is x1, x2 minus 1140 that we have solved and we have estimated beta and pf. So, let us look at the second problem. In this case, we have a column whose length is defined by this L effective. It is hinged at both ends and we have critical buckling formula that is defined by this Euler buckling load. So, we have this expression P critical. In this case, it is n square pi square ei by L effective square. And for that, uh, the given parameters are moment of inertia, that is the value of capital I, Young's modulus and load. All these variables, you can see they are following normal distributions. Respective mean and standard deviations are given. And then we consider the first buckling mode and then calculate Pf and beta for a effective length of 3 meter. So, for that, again, the main file is already developed. So, we can call this function file for every problem and then we can solve. The only task now we have to define is the limit state function. So, we define the second limit state function in this case id is 2. So, the number of variables in this case we have 3. So, we define three random variables x2, x3 and then we have three random variables that we have to convert into standard normal space. So, we need z1, z2, z3. Then exactly same way we define, we can actually copy this to and then update it. So, we have x and z. So, in this case, because we have three random variables, so you add one more. Here also, we have z3. Then, we define gx. Before that, uh, we have to also define the mode. In this case, we use first buckling mode, so n equal to 1 and we have L effective, which in this case is 3 meter. Now, once that is done, then we define gx, which is n square pi square. So, n square pi square times ei So, we have two variables x2 and x1 that defines E and I. Then we have L effective square. That is the critical buckling load. And then the limit state is we apply a load P which is defined by the variable x3. So, we have a allowable critical buckling load 
and then we apply a vertical load on the column. So, these two together forms the limit state function in this case. And then we again define the details of this limit state. So, we just copy and paste it here. That defines the second problem. So, let us see. In the main file, we now have to define the properties of this random variable. So, that is the first problem. So, what we do, we again copy it. We solve for second problem. So, PFID is 2 and then we also define the properties of the random variable. So, in this case, we have mean for the first random variable x1. In this case, it is the i value. So, we have 5 e minus 7, then e value, in this case it is 2 e 8, and then finally the load, which in this case is 80, so 80. Then we have to define the standard deviation. So, in this case, we have 1.25 e minus 8. Then, the next one, 1 e 7, 1 e 7. And then, the last one for load, we have, this is 8. So, this is 8. Just remember the sequence of this random variable must match with the sequence of random variables that you use in this symbolic expression. So, in this case you see n square pi square e i. So, e i define as the second random variable and i as the first random variable and then minus p which is the third random variable. So, in this case I also follow the same sequence here and then call the same function file to run the case and find for the reliability index and probability of failure. Let us run it. So, what we can see in this case, it takes three iterative. So, after three iterations, we get the value of beta which is in this case 2.96 and the respective probability of failure is 0 0.0015. And we also get the design point because we write it up to fourth decimal place. That is the reason we do not see it here, but we can write down the exact values of xd if we increase the number of decimal places. So, the second problem is solved, which in our case is a actually loaded column and for that we have solved for beta and pf. Now, let us see what is there in the third problem. So, in the third problem we have a limit state function gx, which is equal to x1 square plus x2 square minus 18. So, that is the equation of a circle and then um, we have two random variables in this case x1 and x2. Both are following normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation 5. So, in this case our task is to find out beta and pf. Now, apparently this is an 
expression for a circle. So every point, I have already explained this to you. Every point on this um, curve having the same radius, but the moment we introduce randomness and we convert this into standard normal space, our task is to find out the minimum distance. So let us do that. So we define the third problem. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this case also we have two random variables. So let us just copy and paste it. And then our random variables are x1, x2. And the limit state is x1 square plus x2 square minus 18. So that's the expression. So you have defined x1 square, x2 square minus 18. That's the limit state. And then let us solve it. So for that, again in the main file, we have to define the properties of the random variable. So in this case, PFID is 3. And mean we have 10 for both of them. So it is 10 and 10. And the standard deviation is 5. So that defines the complete problem statement. So let us again run the same code and see. Oh, sorry, here is a mistake, so it should be 3. So if we run it, we get the solution. In this case, again, it solves in two iterations. So after the two iterations, we get the design point, which is at 3. And the reliability index in this case is 1.9799. And the respective probability of failure is 0.0239. So you can see, if you have a quadratic response surface, we can solve for beta. So I'll give you a small task. You can plot this function gx and in both original space and standard normal space. And then you can see how you initiate your iteration. So you can plot on that function, you can plot the different uh, design points. So your initial value of z and then how you actually get the design point in standard normal space. And then that also you can show in original space and you can look at this design point once you plot this function. That will give you clear idea how this iterative procedure works. So I leave that as an exercise. All of you must try and see how this algorithm converges. So we have solved the third problem. Then let us see the fourth problem. What we have here is a limit state. In this case, it is again an exponential function. You can see the expression exponential of 0.2x1 plus 6.2 minus exponential of 0.47x2 plus 5. Again, we have two random variables x1 and x2. And in this case, x1 and x2 are already in standard normal space. So let us see how we can solve this problem. So again, we define the limit state. In this case, problem ID is Four. 
So we have exponential of first expression 0 0.2 times x1 plus 6.2 then minus exponential of 0.47x2 plus 5. So this is 0.47x2 plus 5. So that defines the limit state. You can notice how easy it is to define different um, limit state. And once you write one function file and that you can use to solve different problems. So again, we go to the main file and here we have to define the problem statement. In this case, problem number four we are solving. And we have two random variables, x1 and x2. Both of them are in standard normal space. So the mean is zero and standard deviation is one. Okay, so the problem is defined. Now let us solve it. Yes, it is solved. So in this case, it takes three iterations. And at the end of iteration, we have the design point you can see on your screen. So the design point is minus 0 0.9199 and 2.1617. And the final beta we get is 2.3493 and the respective probability of failure is 0 0.0094. So, for this nonlinear function defined by these two exponential terms, we have solved for reliability index and PF. So, in this case, uh, we use three iterations. In fact, uh, you can use the same code. You can change the tolerance and investigate whether you need um, more number of iterations depending upon the tolerance that you set. That I leave it as an exercise for you so you can try it. Okay, so the last problem we have in this case is again, we have a steel column. And this steel column is subjected to an axial load P and a bending moment M. And the limit state in this case, which we see in our design codes, so it is M by MP plus P by PU should be less than or equal to 1. What is MP? It is the plastic moment capacity of the column. And what is PU? It is the ultimate axial load carrying capacity of the column. Okay, so what other properties are given? The cross-sectional area you can see on your screen, cross-sectional area is given and the plastic section modulus also given. And how many random variables in this case? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Altogether 5 random variables we have. What are they? They are Fy. Then we have Md, Ml, PD and PN, sorry, PL. So, these subscripts, capital D and capital L, they correspond to the live dead load and live load. So, we have the actual loads and the bending moments corresponding to the dead load and live load. They are also uh, random variables and all of them are following normal distributions and the properties are given. So, our first task is to again define the limit state. So, what we do in this case, we have five random variables. So, we define up to x5. And then in the z space also, we have to define 
all the random variables. Similarly, here also we have to modify x and z vector. So, we have all of them are defined. Now, in this case, we have to consider all the parameters for this column. Let us do that one by one. So, we have cross-sectional area A which in this case 6496. Then we have capital Z that is the section modulus or let me define ZP because we have Z as a variable. So, ZP which is 678700. Zero zero. Then we define MP which in this case is x1 times zp that is the plastic moment capacity then we define pu and that is x1 times a then we define M, which is the applied bending moment. In this case, it is the sum of bending moment due to dead load that is defined by the random variable 2 and then live load, which is by X3. Similarly, we also define the actual load where again we have two components corresponding to dead load and live load. So, we have x4 and x5. So, we have defined all of them and then we have to define the limit state in this case. It is 1 minus capital M divided by MP plus capital P divided by Fine. So, the limit state is defined and then in the main file again we have to define the properties of the random variable. So, our id in this case is 5. So, the properties are you can see on your screen we have mean and standard deviation defined. So, that let us type it here. So, the first one is 262.5, then next one is 0 0.1785. E8. Next one is 0 0.1394 E of 8. Then 0 0.398 E6. Then 0 0.3108 E6. So, the mean values are defined. Let us now define the standard deviation. So, in this case it is 26.25, then 0 0.1785 E7, 0 0.3945 E7, then 0 0.3988 E6, and then 
0 0.87 0 e 5 okay so the complete problem is defined so let us now solve to estimate the reliability index and probability of failure so let us run the main file and again in this case you see we use three iterations after three iteration the values are converged so we have the design point in this case again the first value is not visible because of the restriction on decimal places we have only the up to fourth decimal places so we can show that that's not a problem so we have this is the design point at the end of third iteration and the respective reliability index beta is in this case 1.5703 and the probability of failure in this case is 0 0.0593 so just note these values so we are going to change the format of the um, limit state function in a minute and we'll see how these values are changed but for this problem after third iteration we have the design point that you can see on your screen so these are the five values of the design point and the respective reliability index you can see also on your screen it is 1.5603 and the probability of failure so now in this case uh, this problem has a last part so if the safety checking format uses a nonlinear model so in this case we have m by mp plus p by p a whole square which is less than or equal to 1 then what should be the reliability index so what we do for that all other factors remain same so we redefine the limit state once more so in this case we have a quadratic term so in this case it is square and that defines the limit state function in a new format okay so let us run this and see how the values of beta in this case beta in the first case beta was 1.5603 and pf is 0 0.0593 so let us run this again we have again used three iterations so the design point changes in this case because the limit state has changed and also you can see earlier beta was 1.5603 now in this case we have a beta of 1.8907 and also the pf which was earlier 0 0.0593 in this case we have 0 0.0293 so that's how we can actually write the matlab codes for solving first order reliability problem so in this case we have two function files so this limit state is common as we i mean go for other uh, problems that we identified earlier we'll see we'll use this limit state function only thing is in this uh, main file where we solve the raquid fizzler algorithm we are going to add other um, mathematical models as we change the definition uh, of the random variables in this case it was uncorrelated normal so as we progress we'll first consider say correlated normal and then correlated non-normal and we'll solve all 
different possibilities one by one. But today, this gives you fairly good idea how we can write the same set of equations in MATLAB and then solve the problem. As we progress in this lecture series, we will see um, in the next class, we will actually solve for non-normal problems and correlated problems. And then in the third lecture, instead of writing limit state in this format, we will have a finite element model and solving that we will get the limit state and then uh, we will see how we can actually combine different softwares. In this case, we will actually use uh, ANSYS. So, we will solve a uh, structure in ANSYS and then from that ANSYS, we will take the output and then we will define this limit state function to solve it. But this first lecture in this module gives you fairly good idea how we can write this um, code and solve Rackwitz Fisler algorithm. So, with that, uh, we close our lecture here for this week. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.